Additionally, I'm trying to get the stream going for the YouTube channel. As you know, we try to stream it on YouTube. Uh, this is a direct to net, meaning all traffic should be coordinated by net control. If there is an emergency or priority traffic at any point, please feel free to break in. Again, for this net, there is no roll call or check-ins. Instead, we'll have an open call for questions and allow time for others to help answer them. Please remember to let the repeater carriers drop between transmissions. There's a large number of repeaters tied into this net. And I'm checking the map, and it looks like this is the Southwest Community Radio System and the Texas GMRS system tied together tonight for this net uh, with a couple of other repeaters on, but we are missing the Broadnet group. So uh, those guys up in the Northeast are not here tonight. Do we have any opening announcements before we get started for this net? Please give your call sign now. Again, a quick reminder from the uh, Tucson guys, don't forget about the Guthrie 600 Repeater GoFundMe initiative and Camp per Kerchunk at Luna Lake Campgrounds near Alpine in late August. Details can be found on both of these by going to TucsonGMRS.org. Again, if you uh, want to support the, the Guthrie 600 Repeater or if you want to partake in the Camp Kerchunk at Luna Lake, uh, go to TucsonGMRS.org. As normal, I'm going to open the floor to anyone who has a technical question about GMRS radio service or radio service in general. Please give your call sign and wait for acknowledgement. I figured it was going to be a little quiet, so I've got a couple of trivia questions. Um, so we'll, uh, if you got the answer, just put out the last three of your call sign. I'll read a trivia question. This is related to tools. Um, if you're a tool guru, if you like using tools, I uh, figured TechNet is a good place to talk about tools. And then uh, maybe someone will have a question here in a minute. All right, so the last three are call sign. Uh, first question, what is meant to remove the protective coating from electrical wires? Wire strippers, candy strippers, wire tapper, or potato peeler? Six oh two wire strippers. Yes, sir, wire strippers, that's correct. It removes the protective coating from electrical wire. Please do not use a pair of pliers. You can damage the uh, wire uh, and not realize it and cause an electrical fire. So you want to use the proper tool for the proper job. In this case, to strip the wire, you would use wire strippers. All right, what is this tool? It's a removable boring tool. Would that be duct tape, a hammer, a drill bit, or a utility knife? Seven one drill bit. Five three three drill bit. I got seven seven one in there first. Uh, go ahead seven seven one. I think you're, you're going to say drill bit. Yeah, I figured this would be an easy topic since it's technical uh, and some of it can relate to uh, working on radios and stuff. We could do some tool questions. <laughs> uh, unless someone has a question out there, we're all ears. Uh, if you've got a question about GMS radio or radio services in general, uh, please give your call sign. If not, we've got another question.
What is designed to cut items like sheet metal? Needle nose pliers, snips, snizzers, or a chainsaw? Six zero two snips. I think that was seven zero two I heard in there. Um but yeah, snips is the correct answer. Okay, uh, what is used to apply torque to objects like nuts? A level, a wrench, a drill, or a hammer? 782 wrench. All right, I heard you in there, 782. That is correct, it is a wrench. I appreciate it, sir. What kind of tool is used to grab and pinch objects, particularly those in a crimped space? A cross nut, a cross cut saw, needle nose pliers, common pliers, or a biscuit joiner? All right, thank you, 602. Well, you are correct. The needle nose pliers we use in the tight spaces to pinch objects. A length of flexible metal used for measuring things. Would that be duct tape measure, still wool, wooden beam, or a tape measure? 671, tape measure. Thank you, 671. And normally we find tape measures coming anywhere from 25 to 30 feet, and you can usually get about eight or six to eight, depending on how good of a quality of a tape measure, that can it, it can extend out before it flops over. So. Uh, but definitely tape measures are used every day in the construction world. All right, here's another one. What has a rotating disc used for cutting things? A bow saw, triangle saw, circular saw, or a rectangle saw? What has a rotating disc used for cutting things? Six, seven, one, circular saw. All right, I know 671 is not the only one listening tonight. Uh, someone's got to set up. These are not, not too hard of questions. Come on, guys. This is TechNet. We're supposed to be uh, technically inclined here and learning. WREZ914, I'm your net control for this Wednesday's TechNet. Again, we meet every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, Hold on, I messed it all up. Nine Eastern, eight Central, seven Mountain, and six Arizona. So if you guys are over there, Arizona, doing your own Arizona time thing, it's six p.m. for you guys. Six ten, actually. And in New Mexico, I heard that y'all are in for some showers tomorrow. So uh, especially the northern part of New Mexico. So heads up up there and. Uh, Albuquerque, Santa Fe area, uh, where those repeaters are, uh, you might have uh, some wet weather coming. What do we use to clamp various objects together? Pliers, C-clamp, M-clamp, or superglue? What are we using to clamp various objects together? And one uh, B uh, by scripts. Yeah, I think the answer they're going for is the C clamp is used to grip various objects. Uh, they didn't have uh, uh, 
the tool that you had named in here. Um, but yeah, you can use that. That's usually used for smaller objects. Uh, usually you, you use the seat clamp for a little larger of an object. I always like to use my seat clamps when I'm changing my brakes to, to help push out the, the brake fluid um, from the caliper uh, so I can get the new brakes to fit on to the rotor. What are WRMX five five three brakes for a question. Go ahead, brake five five three. Yes. Yeah, so I have a friend who is getting into uh, GMRS, and they are wondering um, what is the community's general attitude towards. I'm guessing equipment is not specifically geared towards GMRS. He's thinking more like a commercial or existing amateur type equipment. Any uh, insight into that? Yeah, I think uh, both types work. Um, a lot of times you can find used commercial equipment cheaper than you can some of the newer amateur stuff. Um, again, there is a list on the FCC website of what is compliant uh, Part 95 and what is not. Uh, so I would definitely check into that. But there is some surplus used commercial stuff that you can use and some amateur, uh, well, uh, stuff made kind of for the amateur service, uh, but it would have to be Part 95 compliant, which means it only transmits on the GMRS frequency. Um, yeah, but that's a good question. If anyone else has an answer, uh, please let us know. Six one eight. Go ahead, six one eight. Yeah, hey, thanks, uh, 914, for the TechNet, man. It's always awesome, and I appreciate you guys, you guys always running it. Uh, this is WRJR618, Brian, in Albuquerque. Um, I, th I found that actually uh, TucsonGMRS.org has a really cool um, set of listings uh, that, that help to quickly find, without going to FCC and digging through all the refer to this paragraph, refer to that paragraph, um, a really cool guide on uh, radios. And uh, at all 95 compliant for sure. Um, I have a, a bunch of different ones, some of them GMRS only and some of them uh, commercial, and I like them all. They're all good, but uh, TucsonGMRS.org has uh, a really quick list of those. It's not comprehensive maybe, but, uh, but it's quick. So WRJR618, duct in it. Yeah, and I actually used that list when I was looking for a radio, too. Um, I'm not exactly sure where to find it on their site, but I know it's on their site. So I'm sure if you put in to Google Tucson GMRS and then approved uh, radios, you would come up with it. Uh, 553, did that help you out a little? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I was asking for my friend, um, you know, because he's got some equipment that, um, you know, tends to be... I guess, you know, not geared specifically towards GMRS, and it, I mean, technically doesn't even hold the uh, 90 or 95 compliance, so that's kind of um, what he wanted to know, is like, you know, best practices and communities insights on that. Yeah, sure, and um, what I could recommend is following the FCC and their Part 95 compliant. Uh, we've heard that uh, other radios, um, especially amateur radios that maybe have had some kind of a modification done, um, are capable of transmitting on the GMRS band. Um, I'm not sure who uses radios that do that. Um, I do not personally do that. I use the Part 95 compliant radios. But um, you know, when we talk about it here on the air, um, we definitely have to say to, to continue to follow uh, the FCC guidelines. They're the rules that dictate how we use the radio, so um, uh, here on the air, we, we definitely can't vary on those now. 
if, if you do something that is not quite within the rules, uh, please don't tell us about it. WREZ914 for the Wednesday night TechNet. Um, yeah, we'll turn it back over. Does anyone else have any other technical questions? I think we got 553 squared away there. Yeah, this is WRNB958 in Tucson. I have a couple of newbie questions. All right, well, welcome 958 uh, to GMRS. Um, hopefully uh, you're having fun here. Uh, go ahead with your new question, your newbie question. And it's always a good question because someone will always jump in there and, and give some really good answers, so go ahead. Okay, thanks. I was so glad to hear about this net. Uh, this is great. My first question was I'm trying to get, um, uh, you know, my repeater listings, and some of them, when they show the tones, they have two tones, like, a, let's say, 97 slash 153. I'm assuming that that means a transmit CTSS code and a receive is that correct? I'm kind of hoping someone in there from uh, your area would jump in and, and lets us know. I, I think I know what's going on, but I want to make sure I get the answer correct. Does anyone know what he's talking about there? When he's seeing the two tones listed, is that? I guess is that in the? Let me ask. Is that in the Tucson area, of the Arizona repeater system, or is that in the New Mexico repeater system? Uh, real, real quick. Uh, five, 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 eight. Are you talking uh, about systems yeah, that have the Tucson uh, one. like I just saw some listing? One specific tone for your TX, a different uh, one for your tones RX. separated by a slash. Okay, there was a double there. I, I understand the question that, that you're trying to figure out what what, what to use since there's a slash uh, when they're listed. Um, I think, and uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong here, um, so I've never heard anyone jump in from that area. I believe that what they're doing is they're actually using both a uh, digital uh, code tone and a uh, PL tone. Uh, so one is analog and one is digital and both of those have to activate at the same time. Um, so you have to have a radio that's capable of utilizing both both of those tone sets at the same time. Some radios don't do it. Um, I think the Bofangs don't do it. Um, but that would be in the programming software. I, am I correct? Is that what they're doing over there? Or is y'all using both a, a PL tone and a, a DCS code? Uh, so this is 553 here. Uh, so I know the Tucson GMRS doesn't do it that I know of, but I know like further up north in Phoenix, um, their uh, repeater configuration is a dual tone. Um, so you have to have not only the, the PL, but also the DPL. And the way their repeater is configured, it does require both. Um, and theirs is a pretty unconventional setup, so... I, if that's what he's talking about, I have heard of it, and I do know that some out there are using it, but um, I really don't personally see what the use for that is. Nine five eight here. Thank you so much for the answers. That's interesting uh, that they use analog and digital. Uh, I don't have digital at all, so I guess I just won't program those repeaters in. And, by the way, they were not part of the uh, Tucson GMRS, you know, uh, Southwest Regional. They were other repeaters. QIS 886 for comments. Eight eight six. Go ahead, 886, if that was you or uh, whoever's number sounded like 886. 
WQYS886. Uh, yeah, most of the ones, uh, I'm actually out of Arizona, and we're doing something called the split tone, meaning that there's a code for transmit and a separate code for decode. So most of the time when you see those two different tones, one is a transmit tone and one is a decode tone. Uh, so some of the repeaters out here are using a split tone system. So hopefully that helps. Nine five eight here. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I'll give it a try and see what works. But thank you so much. Yeah, nine five eight. Normally, you can tell if it's a, 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 a like you said, a flip tone. If it's a, if it's the PL or the analog tone, it normally has a period. So it would be like ninety five point five. If it is a digital one, it would be a three-digit number with no period, so it would be like two, three, seven, or something. Um, so uh, that's kind of how you can tell if they're using uh, if both numbers are uh, the analog number, then then you would program those in. Probably one would be the like you said the the transmit, however they list it, and then one would be the receive. Um, if they're both uh, a whole numbers, uh, three-digit whole numbers, then one would probably be the the transmit and the receive on the back end. Now you don't always have to put the receive in there. Um, the only thing the receive tone does is it lets you only hear the repeater. Um, a lot of times these repeaters ID and uh, or broadcast messages. You won't hear those because they don't do it with the tone. Um, or if you have someone local uh, that's maybe using an FRS radio, um, you wouldn't hear them either. Um, I know I'm in the Houston area, and we have a lot of people that use the FRS radios all over town. So I program in those receive tones, so I don't have to listen to construction sites and businesses and kids uh, on the FRS radios um, when I'm only listening to the repeater. Nine five eight here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I didn't catch the call of the gentleman who was answering the question, but uh, that sounds really good and it makes a whole lot of sense. So thank you for helping out a newbie, and uh, I'll keep listening. Yeah, and my recommendation is if you're not sure, just leave the tone off of the receive side. That way you can hear all traffic on that frequency, and and you're, you don't you eliminate that that process of elimination there that step of, of did I get the receive tone right? Um, you can go back and reprogram the receive tone in, um, and then kind of wait until you know there's traffic on the system uh, to make sure that you're hearing the traffic uh, by watching the light. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the safe bet I tell people if you're not sure, don't program the receive tone. Make sure that you're transmitting and people are answering you back. Then once you hear that traffic, then go ahead and mess with the receive tone um, when you hear one of the nets. Like Sunday, uh, a lot of people tend to play with programming on Sunday uh, because we normally have the, the regional net and then the national net. And so it's a, a very active time on the radio. So if they're trying to check coverage, if they can receive somewhere, or if they are trying to check to make sure their receive tones are programmed correctly, that's usually the time to to mess around with the radio um, because uh, you know it's going to be very active during those, those times on Sunday. Nine five eight here. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll go play with it and uh, yeah, I think I'll leave the receive tone off at first and then if it gets crazy, then put it on. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Now, uh, real quick, uh, break for comment, if possible. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, comment. Uh, we'll break. Yeah, not to drag out the issue, um, but my advice to the gentleman who's asking, um, I generally don't bother programming in the uh, receive tone 
Um, just because I have found that in some cases, if you have like a, a weak signal from the repeater, the um, the tones can actually make it, I guess, less sensitive so your radio doesn't um, receive the signal. Um, and the only time I actually do bother programming like a receive tone is if, like you had said earlier, there's a lot of interference on the frequency already. Yeah, exactly. It only takes nine five eight here. Thank, thank you. Uh, the last person who t spoke. I guess I gotta somehow learn to remember people's numbers. <laughs> but thank you, sir. All right, nine five eight. Did you have any other questions um, pertaining to the radio stuff? I think we've got the, the tone issue kind of worked out. Nine five eight. Uh, that's it for now. I'm just gonna listen and see what you guys are talking about. So uh, you've been very helpful, and uh, it's cool to get uh, the help. So I'm very thankful for this. Net. It's pretty cool. Yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah, come back next week if you've got some more questions and uh, and you need some help. Uh, we end up uh, with a lot of uh, repeater owners on here. Um, Cams with uh, extra license, they're, they've got their uh, extra license. Uh, so we, we kind of end up with a very knowledgeable group here for about an hour on Wednesday um, that uh, makes it real easy just to put a question out and not feel so stupid about asking, uh, you know, and, and, and you might be helping someone else out who had the same question too that's just listening in. So um, we never we never take it as, as a bad thing when you ask a, a newbie question um, because that's what we're trying to teach uh, everyone who's uh, trying to get in on the radio system. I know it can be a, a little daunting and a little complicated, especially when we start talking about radios and antennas and bead lines and all the other questions. Um, you know, because uh, to be GMRS, you don't have to have taken a test. All it requires is a sign up on the FCC website and seventy dollars in your license. No testing requirement. So. Uh, we tend to get uh, people on GMRS that are less experienced than you would say uh, on a ham net. So we try to try to share our knowledge with those guys. Nine five eight. Uh, yeah, it's cool and it's great. You guys do it. I did get my ham uh, technician's license, so I'm not um, totally new, but I still have a hell of a lot to learn. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Does anyone else have a, a technical question about GMRS radio or just radio service in general? Please put your call signs out now. All right, six seven one. You, you're the guy with all the answers on the the tool quiz. So, uh, what's the question? Uh, so that way we get the right answer. After the tool question is pretty easy for a technical guy that does a lot of work with tools. Uh, my question is, I have an old ICOM FR four thousand repeater that I found out that I have no computers to program in. What is the oldest operating system of Windows that I can still run DOS on? WQIS 886 for comments. Go ahead, uh, 886. So DOS itself is still around in the Windows space, uh, so it's really a matter of what will the program do and what COM ports are you trying to communicate on. I realize I'm getting into technical weeds, uh, but most Windows machines all have a DOS uh, platform. It's just a matter of will the software you're trying to use communicate to the port or COM port that you're trying to communicate to for that radio. And I don't know those details, but the question regarding the DOS, uh, 
most newer ones, even older ones, all have it. Uh, the real question is how old of a box do you have? Comet 553. Go ahead, 553. All right, so um, Windows all the way back to 3.1 um, has a DOS uh, interface. But as far as programming, um, the oldest machine that I know of um, that supports like COM ports and stuff like that would be uh, Windows 95. Yeah, now do you remember, does Windows 95 support 16-bit, uh, or is that strictly a 32-bit program? Because I think that the bits matter, too, um, when we're talking about the programming software. Um, most modern Windows uh, 10 machines are 64-bit, and, uh, and so they normally don't work when you're trying to program that older stuff. Thanks for comments. Go ahead, comment 886, I think. So the, the very first one for DOS came out with the Windows Workgroup, which was back in the day where you had an IBM DOS and a uh, Windows DOS. Uh, but Windows 98, Windows Workgroup, either one of those should work. And some of, uh, even the Windows Me, the Windows XP, some of those will actually get into 16-bit uh, uh, programming. So it's, the real question is, can you find one that still works and try it? That's going to be the best bet. And if you run into problems, you're most likely going to have a COM port problem, not necessarily the programming, because most of those uh, you can uh, turn to switches and get them to work. 960 for comments. Oh, go ahead, David. How are you doing? Uh, we hear you in there with a comment. We'll give it to 960. Yeah, doing good, doing good. Thanks for uh, running the net, Mark. Um, it depends on uh, how old the programming software is that you're trying to run really is. Some uh, old programming software requires uh, real-time access to the computer's COM port, and so running DOS through Windows isn't going to work because it's going through a uh, virtualized driver. Um, even though virtualization is fairly recent, the, uh, the whole buffer arrangement on the COM port um, doesn't really work that well on the older stuff. Uh, once you really get in any version of Windows that's newer than Windows ME. But there's an easy workaround for it. Um, you can format a USB drive uh, with MS-DOS on it. Uh, it's called FreeDOS. It's actually built into Windows, and you can format it right in there. And uh, as long as your computer has an actual physical COM port on it, um, you can boot from that USB drive and run basically a native version of DOS that will run any of the old stuff and, uh, and has that real-time access to the COM port. So if, uh, if you're dealing with really old software, that's, uh, that's a pretty foolproof way to get access. Um, if uh, a lot of newer stuff will still run on virtualized uh, versions of DOS, like uh, there's, a, I think it's called Virtual DOS, um, that basically runs like a virtual machine on your, uh, on your computer. And that works in some cases, but often it has its quirks. And um, you got to remember, too, that if, if it is software that will run on like Windows XP or something like that, you can run it in Windows 10 um, as long as it's 32-bit. Uh, and some of the software, like a lot of the Kenwood stuff that's really only like rated to run on Windows XP, runs just fine on the Windows 10 64-bit stuff. So it uh, depends on how old the software is and uh, if it needs direct access to the company. Uh, but if, if you're really stuck with All right, thank you, 960. You're kind of breaking up at the end, but we got most of it. We got we got it all the way up to the last couple words. So um, 671, did uh, did that take care of that? Did that help uh, put you a little more in the right direction? Roger, I got uh, free DOS, which is what I was probably the most interesting piece out of that that I want to look at. Um, I may possibly just try to find an old XP machine or Windows 95 machine somewhere that somebody has laying around, give it a try. 
I tried it in dark box, but I didn't have any luck. I couldn't, uh, you know, I had no way to save it because I was working off of the, the actual software CD, so it, it wouldn't let me do anything with it at the time. Yeah, thanks, uh, 671. Thank you, 960. Again, this is a question that, that has been brought up several times to me, and I've heard people talk about because, uh, like we talked about earlier when the question was raised about using commercial-grade equipment or amateur-grade equipment, um, and we, we are finding the commercial-grade equipment works decently fine on the GMRS side, and it's really cheap. You can get it on places like eBay or if you've got a local electronic store that sells used equipment. Um, and then we're back into the question of, well, what do you do with a piece of uh, uh, hardware that was made in the 90s that you're trying to program? All right. Well, we are looking for any technical questions. Uh, we had a, a few good ones in here tonight, um, so please give us your call sign uh, if you've got a question. Once again, WRMX553. I have two questions, um, kind of newbie questions, um, if you guys are interested. Okay, 553. Five, five, uh, stand by. There was someone else trying to come in with you, uh, but they kind of dropped off. So uh, we'll give it a second. Uh, if you were just uh, also keying up with 553, five, go ahead and try it again. WRFQ513. WRFQ513. Uh, let me give it to him first, 553. Five, five, uh, can you stand by for just a second since you already had a question? Uh, 513, uh, go ahead, sir, with your question. Five one three, uh, go ahead with your question, please. Five one three, uh quick question. Is the Capilla peak repeater still down? Nine sixty. Yeah, go ahead, nine sixty. Uh yes it is. There was a lightning strike at the site and uh It'll be offline for a little bit and, uh, until 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 Russ gets a chance to take a look at it and uh, hopefully get it back on the air. WFC five one three, appreciate it. Monitoring. Yeah, David, where is that repair? I'm trying to look on the the Tucson, I mean the mygmrs.network map, and I was trying to look to see if I don't even see that repeater on here. Maybe it's dropped off. It might be flagged as offline. Um, it's uh, it's in the same range as the uh, Sandia Crest, just uh, further south by I don't know, 30, 30, 40 miles or something. Right, WRC 513. The Capilla Peak is down in the Montanos. It has a coverage area that covers a lot of Los Lunas and Berlin, which is why I was wondering. Okay, yeah, very good. Yeah, I think it's uh, not showing up here for some reason on the map, uh, since maybe it's not been active for a certain amount of time. That's pretty cool, though. You can go to mygmrs.network, and you can see a live map of the linking topography and which repeaters are keying up, where the repeaters are located, 
You can also, at the very top, uh, you can listen to the traffic on the repeaters uh, on the various systems. So like you can go to the 176 Southwest hub and listen right here to the TechNet uh, just from that one website. So that's pretty cool. I recommend if you haven't checked it out, going to mytmrs.network uh, to look into that. And uh, thank you, uh, six, uh, 960, again. <laughs> the, we know that lightning can be pretty hard on our repeater equipment. And uh, it is not fun or cheap replacing some of that stuff. All right. Um, 513, I think that got your question answered, so I'm going to throw it back to 553, uh, who had a couple of newbie questions. Uh, go ahead, 553. Uh, one question at a time here. Whiskey Romeo, Mike X-Ray, 553. Uh, so the first newbie question, um, for those who are new into the radio service, and just as like a, I guess, personal preference or configuration in general, um, what is the overall, I guess, etiquette or standard when it comes to the courtesy tone or um, the Roger tone, um, or even a preamble um, when you key up? You What's the overall, um, I guess, feeling about that? Leave it off. Yeah, I guess uh I guess I'll be the devil's advocate here. Um well, hold on a second. Okay, I just got a message that we uh now have the uh Broadnet linked in. So welcome guys there on the Broadnet system to the TechNet. This is W R E Z nine one four as your host. Uh, we were going to about um Ten o'clock there, uh, Eastern, um, and that's when we're going to wrap it up. So we got about 15 more minutes. So we'll give y'all guys a chance to to ask some questions up there. Now that y'all have linked in, uh, we've got a question right now on the floor about courtesy tones, uh, the Roger beep, if you would. Um, you know, uh, there has been a debate in the FCC. It doesn't say to do it. It doesn't say not to do it. If you uh, listen uh, here on the radio for any amount of time, uh, especially when people key up uh, only for a few words and then unkey, uh, when two people are doing it, it becomes really annoying. When three people have it, it, it it's it, the problem is, is some people come in with really low audio uh, based on different radios that are being used on the system. So when you have to turn your radio up kind of loud to hear them, and then that Roger beep comes over, it comes over super loud uh, because you already had your radio turned up to hear someone. Um, so I don't use it. I don't find any benefit for using it. Um, I can look at my radio with a little green light and know when someone stops transmitting. I can listen to my radio and figure out when someone's not transmitting. So I don't need the Roger beep. Some people like to run the M. DC 1200, which is the, the Motorola version of IDing the radio units, that's popular for the guys in the Midwest, and it only works really good with the Motorola radios. The Kenwoods tend to have a little problem uh, when we're linked in, so um, I don't run it because it doesn't do me any good, um, and uh, with the delay sometimes in, in the linking, it gets cut off halfway anyways. Uh, but I do hear I do hear it out there. Uh, five five three. Uh, did that help you out? I would say just leave it off if you're programming it. Um, there's really no reason to have it. Ah uh, yes. Now I was just playing devil's devil's advocate for the newbies out there that might have the same question. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And we we definitely asked them uh, if they would to unprogram that. Um, nothing says you can't. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna not talk to you because you have it programmed on. Um, but you know, like I said, when when you listen to a couple of people who have the same style radio and, and that keeps going off and off and off, eventually you just end up turning your radio down and uh, doing something else. 
So, uh, did you have any more questions, 553? If not, I'm going to turn it over to the guys uh, up there in the Northeast to see if they have any questions since they joined late. Uh, yes. Second question involves licensing. Um, so, if you are sharing your license with a brother that lives with me, or... I'm sorry. So, the second question revolves around licensing. So, According to the GMRS, you can share your GMRS license with your immediate family members. So when that's the case, um, and you're calling out over the radio, what is the proper etiquette for ID? Is it like, um, for instance, WRMX553 Radio 1 calling Radio 2? Or how does that work? Um, yeah, on that topic, there is no law of the land. Um, we we like to try to designate it so you kind of know who you're talking to. But if you want to use first names, you can. Um, you know, uh, if you want to use uh, letters, Alpha to Bravo, or Home to Mobile, um, you can. Um, it, it's just we need to have at least the FCC call sign said at the beginning of the transmission and then every 15 minutes thereafter. Um, and that's why you keep hearing the ID throughout the net because I, I will forget about it and not do it, so I'm trying to stay compliant. Um, as long as the call sign is out there, uh, in terms of the, the unit designation, we don't really have a standard. Um, and I've heard them all over the place. I like to call myself Unit 1. My like my wife, when I talk to her on the radio, she likes to call herself Unit Alpha, so Unit A. So I have 1 and A, and that makes absolutely no sense, but that's just what we do since uh, neither of us wants to give up the dominance. Beautiful. Thank you for answering that question. And with that, I'll turn it back to you and the guys that just joined in. WRMX 553 monitoring. Yeah, sure, no problem. And if y'all want to use nicknames too, uh, again, keep it uh, family appropriate nicknames. Um, you know, it, as long as you say your call sign, um, you can even do nicknames. Um, you know, I've heard some people uh, with some pretty cool nicknames <laughs> over the over the course of a few years on here. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just a way to identify yourself a little further um, if you've got two people using the same radio. Um, how do you do it on the FRS, though? You know, it, I mean, you don't even have to be licensed on FRS. How do, how do you know who you're talking to or how do you call for someone when you're on the FRS side? Uh, do, you, do you say their name? Do you say their, their call sign if they have an FCC call sign? How do you do that? All right, uh, we'll throw it over to the Northeast. Uh, anyone on the broadnet tonight, y'all join late. Uh, if you have a technical question about GMRS radio or radio service in general, uh, please uh, let us know your call signs. Looking for anyone in the Broadnet area, uh, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, all those great states up there. I'm sure I'm missing some Pennsylvania. Um, if you all have got a technical question, uh, we're leaving the channel open here for a minute uh, so you can key up and let us know uh, what your question is tonight. All right, well, nothing heard there. Uh, again, if you have a question, please let us know. Uh, we do appreciate Joel uh, for linking us together tonight, WQZR739. Uh, uh, again, he is one of the repeater owners up there uh, in New York City, uh, and he usually comes in on the uh, broadnet on the Bronx repeater. Um, so we appreciate him doing that tonight. And again, we appreciate uh, all the repeater owners out there, not just Joel. Uh, David, uh, who was on here a couple times earlier, uh, who owns the repeaters uh, over there 
in the Arizona area. We appreciate everything you do for uh, and working with Russ over there uh, for keeping that system up and going and adding new repeaters. Um, I feel like every time I look at the map, they'll have added a new repeater somewhere. Um, so thank you again, David. Uh, this is WREZ914. We've got about eight more minutes left here on the TechNet. If anyone has a question about GMRS radios or radios in general, uh, please give us your call sign. All right, well, with nothing heard, I've got a few more questions about tools uh, since we're doing the TechNet. I uh, figured you guys would like some questions about tools. Uh, again, with your call sign, uh, last, four your or last three of your numbers only. Uh, tell me, what cuts an object with a, a rapid back and forth motion? Is it a circular saw, a table saw, a drill, or a reciprocating saw? Six, seven, one, reciprocating saw. I've got four correct answers from 671 tonight. Thank you uh, out there. We appreciate it. Um, what features a rotating abrasive disc for polishing or cutting? A lathe, impact driver, angle grinder, or a hacksaw? 671, angle grinder. All right, six seven one. Let's uh, let's see if someone else. You've got five now. Uh, let's see if someone else can get one of these. Uh, we'll we'll let their brains think for a second. What is a device that is used? It has an air bubble in it, sus uh, suspended in a liquid that is used to determine whether something is level or plumb. A plane, a kneel, a protractor, or a level. Seven one seven level. Yes, it is a level. What tool is designed to screw in bolts or screws that features a hexagon socket inside the head? A bobby wrench, a Ricky wrench, an Allen wrench, or an adjustable wrench? 513, Allen wrench. Thank you, that is correct, 513. It is an Allen wrench. Um, and I recommend having all the sizes because it seems like uh, you can never figure out by looking at it what size you need. You just have to go grab the whole bundle of them and bring them over there. What do we call an open-ended wrench equipped with an adjustable jaw? A strap wrench? A socket wrench, a crescent wrench, or a torque wrench. Again, what is an open-ended wrench equipped with an adjustable jaw? 782, crescent wrench. Yes, sir, I had a couple of people in there. Y'all were both correct, a, a crescent wrench. Does anyone have any questions about GMRS radio service or radio in general? Please give your call signs out now. We're just still in the last few minutes with a little pool trivia. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be uh, ending the TechNet here in about three or four minutes. So uh, we're listening if you've got a question. All right, nothing heard there. We'll finish it up with a couple more questions. Everyone seems to be enjoying these. 
What do we use to verify a 45 or 90 degree angle for ensuring a straight, short straight line? Again, a 45 or a 90 degree angle uh, in a short straight line. Do we use a duct tape, a level, a lead triangle, or a combination square? Five one three combo square. Yes, sir, and that becomes your best friend when you're doing uh, home maintenance around the house or job site construction. Uh, if you're doing any kind of woodworking, uh, it seems like that uh, that lives in your in your pocket there. What do we use to apply spackle during drywall repair? So we're putting up the drywall. We got the we got the stuff. We're gonna slither on the wall. What, what kind of tool are we using? A utility knife, a steak knife, a butter knife, or a putty knife? Five one three putty knife. Correct, correct. Thank you, thank you. It's a putty knife. WRMG 740. Yes, go ahead, 740. Hey, yeah, how's it going out there, guys? This is Grant from Mesa. Just was listening on your tech net. Uh, just Enjoying the radio. I've been in the GMRS since April and just got my ham technician here a couple weeks ago. So having a good old time. Just wanted to say hey. Well, congratulations, first of all, 740 on passing that and getting that ticket. Um, that will definitely lead you into a world of excitement and fun. Um, please don't don't let us go here on the GMRS. Uh, we try to keep it alive and well too. Um, it's a it, it's a little different, you know, on GMRS versus the the amateur stuff. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, nearly the competition uh, as you would uh, because we just try to keep it family friendly. Uh, we just try to enjoy it for what it is, um, and uh, it, it's a little more of an open system, I feel like, but. Um, I'm not knocking the ham stuff. I really love the ham. Hams do great things. If it wasn't for the ham guys, we wouldn't have the link system like we do here on GMRS. Those are the guys who invented it. We just kind of stole it and borrowed it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, congratulations. Uh, again, welcome to GMRS, and I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, let us know if there's any ways we can improve it. Um, we've got definitely a, a good group of guys uh, from coast to coast. Uh, trying new things uh, to make this uh, a really good service. Um, so uh, we always welcome comments, questions. Please get a hold of one of the net controls uh, when we have these nets. Uh, again, we have multiple nets throughout the week. Uh, please get a hold of one of the repeater owners if you can't get a hold of one of them. Um, I'll have each other's phone numbers, emails, and, and text message numbers. So uh, get a hold of one of them. We'll get you a hold of one of us. Uh, yeah, ten four. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm good with GMRS and ham. I'm not going to become a ham snob or anything. I'm I'm having fun with it all. I've met some nice people in all all the realms, and I'm just taking it for what it is and having some fun with it. And I like to tinker around anyway. I'm a computer guy, so. Uh, I appreciate it. 740 clear. Sounds very good. Thank you, 740. And we do have a lot of a lot of guys on ham uh, that that are here on GMRS too, and, and we love to have them because they're so knowledgeable. Um, they bring so much more experience into the GMRS side that that a lot of us wouldn't have without them. So so we definitely appreciate everyone uh, who makes the system what it is. Well, guys, this concludes the Wednesday GMRS TechNet. Thank you to all who ask questions and who help answer them. If you'd like to make any future suggestions for topics, please feel free to contact us throughout the week. And I had one for next week, 
uh, earlier this week. Uh, I didn't make it into the queue this week, but it was about soldering soldering iron, soldering guns. So I'm going to put that on the agenda. Uh, if you want to know or learn about uh, some soldering, get some good tips uh, for soldering electronics, uh, we'll be uh, back next week, a uh, week from now, uh, with some information on that. This net utilizes linked repeaters throughout the United States that are part of the MyGMRS network. Please, please visit MyGMRS.com for more information on this network, its linked repeaters, and the GMRS service in general. You can also visit uh, one of the local websites uh, that deals specifically with your community GMRS system. On the Tucson, uh, you're going to want to go to TucsonGMRS.org. Uh, New Mexico is the Southwest Community Radio System.org, TexasGMRS.net, and look up the Facebook group for the Broadnet uh, on your Facebook page. Uh, they have a lot of good information if you're up there in the tri state area. Please remember to continue to support your local GMRS groups that you're part of. Uh, that way we can fix those repeaters when they get struck by lightning. This TechNet meets every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Arizona to answer your technical questions. A special thanks to the many repeater owners. I named a few of them earlier, but there's many more that I did not name. Uh, so if you weren't named, uh, we still appreciate you guys out there. Um, I could be here all night naming people who own repeaters, though. Uh, we'll see you all next time. This is WREZ914. I'm returning the repeater system back to its regular operation. You all have a good evening tonight. WRHB671, thank you for the technique there, Mark. Appreciate it. WRMX553, yes, sir. Thank you for hosting the uh, technique tonight. It was very informative, and I appreciate everyone for taking the time to help answer the questions. Yeah, there was a slight double there, uh, 739. We heard you loud and clear. Uh, there was another unit in there, though, that we couldn't hear. Uh, go ahead uh, and see if you can try that transmission again. WSQ513, uh, good time, good net, appreciate it. And just be advised for anybody who was using the Capilla Peak repeater, um, I'm on the Sandia repeater now on a short 7 8 ground plane mobile antenna in my vehicle, and I'm still getting 5x5 five five comms, so uh, Sandia's reaching pretty good. Please note, the Southwest Community Radio System will disconnect in five minutes. Yeah, thanks. And uh, if, especially if you're newer to GMRS, um, don't forget that uh, in the Southwest uh, and the Broadnet both have a Zello channel that are tied to the repeater systems. Um, so if you're unable to get in, um, I recommend downloading the Zello app and joining either the SWCRS or the Broadnet Repeater Systems group, depending on which area you live in. Um, and uh, for the Texas guys, uh, we do have a uh, client for the IAX uh, that you would need to get uh, with us and get a login if uh, you want to come in through the Internet. So just because the repeater is down is no excuse not to be on the radio.
It also helps when you get out of the range of the repeater too. WRFI 782. Yeah, thanks, Steve. It's good to hear you on the road there. Um, I think we're going to be disconnecting here with the Southwest just momentarily. But uh, it's, it's good to hear you back uh, driving a truck tonight. Yeah, I'd like to say I'd be driving. I'm currently stuck in a traffic jam. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Uh, traffic this week has not been uh, very productive uh, down here in Houston. I don't know what it is, but uh, we've definitely had a pretty pretty fair share of rain uh, mixed with traffic jams and accidents and everything else. Now, it's the usual road construction over here in, in the KD Sealy area. Whenever they decide to shut down a lane for something, it just has us all backed up for several miles, and tonight's one of them nights. Yeah, and I think uh, the end of last week, uh, there was a pretty good traffic jam up there uh, in the New York, New Jersey area uh, with that tropical uh, storm that was moving through. Uh, I think it caused some flooding. I heard uh, parts of New York City were uh, very inaccessible. Uh, because some of the roads were flooding and they were shutting down uh, some of the, the main freeways around town. Well, traffic is hard there on a good day, so I would think we could imagine what it would be like during the middle of a storm. Yeah, go ahead, 635. Well, it looks like my contact uh, worked out well for the... Yeah, 635, uh, that memorial repair, you know, is having problems, uh, so it kind of cut you off there. You said the contact worked out well. I guess uh, y'all were able to visit, or he was able to visit that place today and, and check out uh, what he needed to. Uh, I'm not sure if he was able to talk with anyone today. I think we had some feedback out of Lovick. Uh, I think you're advising uh, to switch over to the Klein repeater. Is that correct? If you could, I can get into that. All right, no problem. I'll be on the side uh, for a little bit, guys. I'm going to switch uh, radios here uh, so I can talk with them. Y'all have a good night. And remember, tomorrow night, the Broadnet is having uh, their weekly meeting. Uh, so if you're up there on the Broadnet uh, tomorrow night, 
That will begin at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for the Broadnet meeting and the um, React uh, meeting. Um, so you guys, uh, we'll see you all tomorrow night. This is WREZ914 signing off.
WRC 801 and WRHY331 Dale, you out there? Hey, go ahead, Tom, WRC 831. Yeah, I got something for you. Do you mind if I swing by? I'm right down by my daughter's. I'd like to drop some off. Yeah, sounds good. I think we're still linked in here. Doesn't look like it uh, disabled. Okay, sounds good. WRC U eight zero one. Okay, well, I'll talk talk to you on the way in there. So, did the uh, the the linking and disablement didn't work? Yeah, it hasn't uh, disabled yet. Maybe it's got to wait till nine thirty. Oh, you mean it didn't re-enable the link, or are we still linked? Oh, we're still linked with uh, okay. part of the country here. <laughs> okay, I'm a little slow apparently today. So we're still linked to the Midwest or to the uh, to the net. Okay, no, that's cool. Yeah, let's let it bake off and see if the script works anyway. So hello, hello out there in the world. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look like it disabled. It's already 9.30. Okay, I'll just go ahead and do it. No, hold off. Why don't you leave it on for a little bit? I'll just meet you out there. I'll just be on the side. Uh, let's just see if it'll do it automatically. Okay, sounds good. See you in a bit, WRC U801. And WRHY331. WRKM542. I'm hearing some other noise out there. I don't think that's you, Dale. Um, so, Mark, I hear you out there. That's interesting. You guys messing with the linking system again? Well, Mark, uh, I guess the TechNet was tonight. Did you hear the TechNet uh, on my system? No, I think it automatically disconnected as you had it set up, but I figured out what Dan's speaker was. Yeah, okay, you let us hear. What did what'd you find out? It's going to be, uh, well, if everything, he said, if everything lines up correct, it's going to be a GMRS repeater site. Ah, that's where the 675 is going to go, huh? Did he, did he tell you where? Didn't ask questions. I just asked him about his big secret that he told you. Well, he didn't really tell me. I was eavesdropping on the amateur bands. <laughs> so he was on the 2-1 repeater up here with Don and some of the other guys that uh, have those things and whatever else or have access to a lot of sites. Uh, so I, I kind of figured that's what it might be. So I was either thinking that would be a 220 repeater. She likes to use a 220 band as well. Yep, he said if everything's uh, looking good, he is going to do it. So, And I guess he's when he retires, he's going to move down into uh, South Dakota or North Dakota. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Well, that's a couple of years away for him. It's not too far away for him, but probably two, two and a half years. So we got some time with him yet, which is always good. Well, come on, and if we know Dan, he'll never stay away. He'll always come back to us. Now we got to do is get some good GMRS uh, repeater linking technology set up, and we'll just link right down the corridor for them on I-90. That works, too. 
and then we can talk to him. I'm sure he would still come down for special events or something like that. So is he on the 725 tonight then, visiting his mom or something, or what? Um, I don't remember. Uh, he was just going from his uh, fire, going, I think, home from his fire garage where he keeps his fire trucks. Oh, okay. So I'm kind of curious because, uh, like I said, we kind of had this timing kind of thing set up with some cron jobs on the uh, controllers to unlink me uh, during the technet and then relink me, and then Dale was going to be linked and then unlink. So I don't I don't know if his if Dale's side works, so we got to make sure the scripts are working. So that's why I'm kind of asking. Just making sure that it's working the way we want it to. Uh, so... We just try to set up so Dale will automatically link into the tech net because he likes to do that one, which is a, it's a good net, but, you know, I've got a, I'm a little more nervous about my repeater because the duty cycle is limited, so I try to unlink during that, and then Dale will stay linked, and then Dale should unlink here. But with the tone I'm hearing, it sounds like we are still talking on that link, so... That's, uh, that's good news. That's cool. So, yeah, if you wanted to get one, I can program it for you. They're pretty uh, reasonable on eBay if you get one. Might have to take up on that. I, I should do something like that for sure. All right. Very good. Very good. All right, well, I'm getting close to Dale's place here, so uh, I'm going to kind of sign off and just go silent a little bit. Uh, but I will be back on the drive home, so you know, stick with us for a little bit. In 20 minutes or so, we'll, uh, we'll all be back on the air then to make that journey back up into the 725 land. All right, Tom, now, to be our key, well, have a uh, talk to you a little later. 73 WRKM 542, be clear. Roger that. Thanks, Mark, and uh, we'll talk to you in a little bit. I'll be out, like I said, in a little bit. So this is WRHY331. WRHB 671, listen in, modern. 